Hey guys, it's Osobi Communications. Welcome back to another review, this time of the 2014 film Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler is a film I've been interested in, in since the trailers first started coming out. Uh, I have warmed up to Jake Gyllenhaal ever since seeing Zodiac again and as an actor. So I was curious, to, I thought he looked like he was really bringing his A-game here in the trailer. And I really like the premise. I like the idea of these Nightcrawlers. The film's going to focus on uh, Nightcrawlers, which is a slang term for the freelance news guys. The, the guys who go out at night and look for, you know, with their cameras and try to record uh, stuff that they can sell to news crews. That they can sell to uh, local news stations and so forth. And um, so it was a nice, uh, it was unique in itself just because it focused more on, on those people which I don't remember a film ever really doing that before, at least from what I know. And it was an added bonus that you had Jake Gyllenhaal in the film. And um, the trailer sold me. I thought it looked like a very interesting movie. I really loved the song that they used in the trailer. And so I got a chance to see the film recently, and it lived up to my expectations. I really, really love Nightcrawler. And once again, it, 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 uh, it solidifies my hope for the independent film genre, the, for independent movies. Yes, Nightcrawler was released through Open Road Films, but in many ways you can call it an independent movie because it only cost $8.5 million to make. So, so in many ways it technically is an independent film. It, wasn't, it was distributed by Open Road Films, but even Open Road Films isn't really a super big major studio. They release stuff theatrically every now and then, but I think they've also released stuff direct to video as well. So, it's, uh, it's, uh, I, I would count this as an independent movie. And Nightcrawler, I thought, was just a very engaging, thought-provoking, excellent movie. Uh, I really honestly didn't find anything wrong with the film personally. I think it was uh, the most engaging film about a sociopath I've seen since... Well, I wouldn't really say Falling Down is really about a sociopath. But there's a little bit of signs there for Michael Douglas' character. But it's very obvious here. Jake Gyllenhaal does an amazing, does an amazing job playing the sociopath uh, that you cannot take your eyes off of. And I love how the film just opens up right off the bat, completely shattering your expectations of what you th how you think a film should open up, uh, how you, and especially also who your film's lead should be. By shattering your expectations, Jake Gyllenhaal right off the bat is not a good guy. He steals the security guard's watch. He's he's stealing fences and stealing manhole covers and selling them to get money. And so, right off the bat, your main character, your lead, is another one of those characters who isn't necessarily the, the typical protagonist, much like Falling Down. That's not a typical protagonist in that film either, Michael Douglas's defense. Here, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's um, Lou, Lou Bloom, I mean is not your typical uh, protagonist either. And so when the film decides that right off the bat, it's going to portray this lead character as a character who is not necessarily has the best intentions, it automatically sucks you in as the viewer because you're already wondering what is he going to do next. And the film does a great job carrying that narrative carrying that belief that you have while you're watching the film of what Jake Gyllenhaal is going to do next. And at the same time, the film also has some moments that make you laugh. So it has this sort of dark sense of humor at moments that really works in its favor. And as well as just a dynamite performance by its lead, Jake Gyllenhaal, who deserves an Oscar nod for Best, best Actor for this. It was an amazing performance. It, it was... It was. I honestly think it was one of the best, if not the best, performance I've seen on film of a sociopath. He's 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 the typical sociopath. He's cold. He's calculated, but he's also very likable. He's charming. He he's uh, able to. You know, he has this smile that is 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 creepy, but at the same time, kind of heart, kind of kind of warms your heart a little bit but at the same time it's very creepy it's a character that 
He just knows what to say, when to say it, and he just is able to manipulate everything around him like like he's you know like he's the puppet master and it's just you're in awe of how how he keeps able he's able to keep doing this he always seems to have the leverage he always seems to have the upper hand and even the supporting cast does a good job uh, Rene Russo especially in, in a role that gives her a little bit more weight, a little bit more uh, to, to uh, you know, a little bit more for her to throw around her her uh, her acting, uh, to throw around her um, experience, and um, she does a good job too as Nina Romina, who is this a morning news director who is, you know, she's jumped from job to job to job, and here she is in this this uh, in a good neighborhood in a high priced area with good good local news and um in los angeles and she's reaching that time where she usually either gets fired or quits or has to move someplace else and usually it's about two years it's just coming up on two years and so she ultimately runs into jake jillenhall's character lou who decides that he he wants to go he has bigger aspirations for his career he doesn't want to keep selling construction you know selling uh, fences that he stole and manhole cover stolen manhole covers for a little bit of cash to construction sites he doesn't want to keep stealing people's bikes and selling them the pawn shops or whatever to get a little bit of cash he wants to go up he wants to go up the ladder and how he kind of gets this inspiration of what he wants to do next is he ends up being inspired by an amateur film crew that he sees shooting footage of a car crash. And the film crew is uh, Bill Paxton, who plays this, who, led by Bill, Cap Bill Paxton's character, Joe Loader, who has a few scenes in the film, but he's very memorable and very fun. Just typical Bill Paxton being awesome. And so he sees this, them shooting a footage of a car crash, so... He's really inspired by this. So then he trades a stolen racing bicycle that he stole from somebody for a camcorder and a radio scanner. And then he shoots the aftermath of a carjacking to sell it to a local TV station. And the morning news director, Rita Russo, she ends up buying the footage from him for about 250 bucks as a starting off price. And encourages Lou to continue his work. She stipulates that if the station is the most, is the most interested in footage of violent incidents in affluent neighborhoods since these attract the most viewers. And I remember what Rene Russo said, which really stuck with me. It's like, think about what I want, you know, and I always, I liked how they first, you know, taught when, when Jake Gyllenhaal and Rene Russo were going back and forth, and Rene Russo's telling Jake Gyllenhaal's character, Lou, what she wants, and he's, he's like, so bloody, right, bloody. Bloody cells, right, you want, you want, you want it to be bloody. It's like, well, they're not necessarily, but, the, you know, carjackings, uh, murder, and we want a high affluent, you know, high priced neighborhoods. Think about it as if there's a suburban housewife and she's run around hysterically and she has her throat slit. That's what I want. And I, I, li I like that line of dialogue. And uh, it put a crazy image in my head. And so Lou takes her advice and he just starts going hard on, on this uh, shooting these uh, these scenes of violence and crime for the news um, so but he can't do it himself he can't do it by himself he needs somebody to help him so he hires an assistant Rick played by Riz Ahmad Riz Ahmed who I thought did a solid job acting as well a young man who's desperate for money he's been homeless for a while and he's had a couple jobs here and there but it hasn't worked out he's desperate for money so he takes the job so to get better footage, Lou alters the crime scenes, which is pretty uh, controversial. He even moves a dead body from a car crash so he can get the, a better shot, and that's tampering, technically tampering with you know police, you know tampering with evidence, you know tampering with bodies and so forth, and and some people don't really like the score that James Howard Newton Howard uses for this film. They think it's inappropriate. But I really liked it because I think for what I inter how I interpreted it was that this score was supposed to create a dissociative dissonance with the viewer. So what what do I mean by dissociative dis dissonance? What I mean by dissociative dissonance is that 
the score was supposed to create a break from reality. The reality of the situation when Jake Gyllenhaal is moving a dead body to get a better shot is not, not this, this is not right. But the music is triumphant. The music is playing like it's some big grand spectacle. And that made me believe that, that the score wasn't for the film. The score was for Lou. The score was for him. The score was what how he felt in the in these situations. And then I read up somewhere that that's exactly what the filmmaker intended. That's exactly what director Dan Gilroy intended. And he also wrote the film as well. So I, I got I, I'm, I'm I'm giving Dan Gilroy that's a little bit of an applause here. Because he did a, a fantastic job not only writing, the, directing the film, but also writing it. Great job writing and directing it. Um, very well written, very unique, very solid, excellent movie. I really, really like this film a lot. And so, anyway, so so he gets these better footages. You know, he moves a corpse. He, he his work gain ends up gaining traction. And with this, with these uh, more uh, uh, jobs, he's able to buy better equipment and even a really nice car. So the car you see in the trailer, you know, it's there's this red car, and so these really nice cars. So he, better equipment and a faster car because the speed is 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 one of the big things. So we can get there before the cops do. So he uses a police scanner. And he gets to the scene of the crime before the cops do, so we can get, you know, the, the best shot. So, and and one scene he actually turns down a business offer from Bill Paxton, which was a good scene where Bill Paxton's, you know, trying to charm him and being like, you know, you're really getting up there, man. I mean, it's great work, great work. Uh, I'm gonna be expanding my business. I'm gonna be getting like two vans. We're gonna tag team this. I want you to be the second driver. And uh, you drive my second van. And, you know, and uh, Jake Gyllenhaal was not interested. And he even has this response, which I thought was pretty mean, but it's totally exactly how, how this character operates. This is, this is how Lou Bloom thinks. And Lou Bloom's like, I feel like grabbing you by your ears right now and screaming. I'm not fucking interested. Instead, I'm going to drive home and do some accounting. So that this is that's the kind of character that he is, and I love how Bill Paxton responds back to him. He's like, "You just missed a good opportunity, you fucking twerp." <laughs> this is called cool. this is awesome. Bill pa Paxton calling somebody a twerp is just is really cool. So anyway, so but see, Lou is a sociopath, and he's also a little bit has some psychopathic tendencies. So. He realizes that this could be a threat to his, to his income and to his career, because he wants to go up into bigger. You know, he wants to not just be the guy freelancer. He wants to have his own company, his own news company, where he can hire people and make even more money. So he ends up sabotaging Bill Paxton's van, which causes an accident, which he films. And then he threatens to end his business relationship with Renee Russo unless she agrees to be his girlfriend knowing that her job depends on his footage so this is, guy is such a sleazeball and it's a great performance too by Jake Gyllenhaal I mean he's saying stuff like Nina's telling him like they're at this restaurant she's like friends don't pressure friends to sleep with them and Lou's like actually that's not true because as you know Nina a friend is a gift to give yourself. And so you're just like, wow, this guy is something else. And he even ends up, he wants to get up even higher. So what happens is, you know, there's another, another, another you know, there, there's other stuff that he just keeps breaking these journalistic ethics. And this film does an excellent job of showing the outskirts of the law. And pretty much how somebody is one person is able to continuously skirt this fine line between illegal, illegal and legal, between legal and illegal actions, 
and just keep skirting this line and get away with it because of the way that the system is set up. And so, and it makes you uncomfortable as the viewer because he's doing these things like moving a dead body to get a better shot, going back, going, going past the crime scene and into a house to, and f f you're literally just changing some pictures around. There's some bullet holes in a refrigerator. So he moves some family pictures. So they're right next to the bullet holes, starts filming that. He films the family with their baby from inside the house. So he's filming from inside the house. He pretty much broke into to get a shot. And the film does a great job making you feel uncomfortable and uneasy because you're like, okay, he's, he's, it's, it's not necessarily against the law. It is technically against the law, some of the stuff that he's doing. But more than often, it's something he's probably not going to get caught for. He wouldn't be in jail for very long if he was. And it's, at least at least at this moment, early on. Because later, it gets, he literally is breaking the law and getting away with it. But here, it's like, it's just unethical. He's just being unethical. And it makes you, if you have integrity, if you're, you're into this whole ethics thing, it makes you feel like, Okay, what he's doing is wrong, but there's not really anything that he's doing that's illegal here. Um, so it's really it's 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 the movie does put those questions in your head, and it does a really great job with that. And so, but I mean, sabotaging a van that definitely gets the law. But what I'm saying is, these other early stuff, like you know how he gets his shots, aren't necessarily illegal but it also makes you realize that the news is not honestly isn't that trustworthy and we already know that don't believe what you see on the news but here it's even more so because it's like they're changing stories around just to fit their narrative just to fit what what sells what gets people you know watching what helps with sweeps week and so forth and um and it's literally just saying fuck the truth the truth doesn't sell this truth doesn't give us ratings. And that actually comes into play later in the film. So he gets this relationship with Nina, you know, and there's even one scene which I, I like where he's pretty much just telling her. And this is actually because this is actually a scene after he had gets his big thing. Because he sabotages the news van after. Actually, he sabotages the van because Bill Paxton had beat him. He had beat him to a, a big story. There's a plane crash and he beat him because his, his, his assistant gave him the wrong directions. And so he's already furious. So that's why he said, he's, I'm not fucking interested in Bill Paxton when they met up. And that's why he sabotaged his van because he was a threat. And he didn't have anything juicy to give to Rene Russo. She was, she, she was pissed at him. So he decides he needs to get something that the news station, Rene Russo's news station, wants. And they want crime in suburban neighborhoods. Crime in suburbia. And so he gets a good call. He hears a good call from the, from, uh, from the uh, police scanner. And he heads over and even runs some red lights and whatever. And he gets to this high-end really really big app uh, you know mansion like house in an affluent neighborhood and he arrives before the police do and he goes in and he records the footage of these gunmen leaving the SUV and then the dead or dying victims that are in the house graphic graphic footage and really well shot in this sequence by the director cinematography is also top notch by Robert L. Swit and so he then goes with this footage to the news station and the news staff are like this is unethical this isn't right but Nina's like this is what we need and she is eager to break this story but Lou he wants more public credit and he wants more money and he wants to have a, you know he wants to get up the ladder so in, in another way this film is also a story of the American dream but through a different lens. 
through a cloudier lens. It's a story of an American dream, of the American dream as we all know it, through a cloudier lens. That somebody was able to start off with nothing, but was able to do and get to the top, but to do it in a way that's not necessarily agreeable or ethical. Or something that we, we, we as, a, as a society would actually agree with. But once he gets up there, he's up there. And you, you kind of got to admit, you know, hey, he, he was kind of a, he's a douchebag. He's an asshole. And he breaks the law. But he did it. And I, and I can't say I did it. And I can't say I got up there yet. So it's one of those things where you're like, you're jealous. But at the same time, you're also like, this guy, this is not how you should get there. This is not how you should get there. But there's a lot of people that get there. They get up there by by being like Lou. And this cold, calculating, ruthless character. And so after you know, he's got this footage, he just basically starts blackmailing the, 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 uh, the news crew. Like the name of my company is Video Production News. A professional news gathering service. That's how it should be read. And that's how it should be said. I also want to go to the next wrong and meet your team. And the station manager and the director and the acres. And start de developing my own personal relationships. I'd like to start meeting with them this morning. And you'll take me around and you'll introduce me as the owner and president of Video Production News. And remind them of some of my many ever stories. And I'm not done. I also want to stop our discussion over prices. This will save time. So when I say that a particular number is my lowest price, that's my lowest price. And you can be assured at whatever that number is very carefully. Now, when I say I want these things, I mean that I want them. And I don't want to have to ask them again. And that's that's just that's just an example of Joe and Hall, you know, his performance. I can't do it justice, but it's just this he knows what he wants, he's gonna get it, but he's gonna get it at any at, at any price. It doesn't matter. He's going to get there. And if it means breaking the law, if it means lying, if it means cheating, if it means being an all-around unethical, inhuman person to get there, he will do it. And you're glued to the screen watching him. It's one of those examples of rare examples of a film where your lead is not likable. But you, you can't look away. You want to know what happens next. And so what happens is, of course, he sells the footage. And then afterwards, of course, there's a big story. And then the police become suspicious of Lou. And they ask him for his footage of the home invasion. He gives them an edited tape. And he withholds footage identifying the gunman, which is obstructing justice. And then he locates the gunman himself. And with Rick, he stakes them out at a restaurant planning to tip off the police to film the confrontation because he did this on purpose so he can get more money from the news studio and get a better story. So pretty much he put innocent people's lives at risk so he can get a better story because he's a sociopath. He doesn't have emotions. If he does, they're not really real. He's not, he doesn't have that connection that with humanity as uh, he just, he just looks at Everyone else is just people who are in his way. That's what a sociopath does. They just bend the they just they bend the laws and the rules of society to their own gain, and they do it in, in without feeling, without remorse. And that's what he did. He set that up, and it ended badly. The guys got a couple of the killers got shot to death. Cops got hurt. People, innocent people, got hurt. Then he goes on a car chase. There's a pretty thrilling car chase. Try to get more footage of this chase of this one of those guys who escaped from the restaurant being chased by these cops. And then an accident happens. A cop car gets crashed. And then he does and, and he he pretty much he pretty much instigates murder. Because earlier there's a sequence with his friend with his uh, with co-worker um, Rick where Rick was not he didn't want to do this he didn't want to do be a part of the shooting you know filming the confrontation with the police and the and the and the gunmen 
And so he demands half the money that Lou stands to make. And he threatens to tell the police about Lou's activities. And Lou agrees, but he demands that Rick get out of the car and shoot a supporting angle. And, of course, Rick complies when Lou threatens him with violence, which is a, with a never good scene, which is where you really see that this character, he's... This is another proof, more proof that he's a sociopath. But there were some points early on in the film, you knew he was breaking the law, but you were kind of looking at him, okay, maybe if he finds the right career, then maybe he won't be... Uh, he won't be this bad anymore. But no, he's still this bad. He just found a career that can make it so he can get away with being his sociopathic self and still make money and still affect the world around him. And he, a way that he can still be the puppeteer, too. And so, I like this is a line of dialogue where he's he's basically intimidating his, his uh, partner with words. What if my problem wasn't that I don't under understand people, but that I don't like them? What if I was the kind of person who was obliged to hurt you for this? I mean, physically. I, I, I think you'd have to believe afterward, if you could, that agreeing to participate and then backing out of the critical moment was a mistake. Because that's what I'm telling you, as clearly as I can. Threatened violence, but he did it in a way that was a typical sociopath. Just, just, just pulling those strings. And Jake Gyllenhaal just did masterful performance. So, so what happens is he they shoot all of this, and then the, and then you know the, the the SUV chase happens. Police give chase. Lou and Rick tail record. And after the gunman's SUV crashes, as I mentioned earlier, Lou urges Rick to film the gunman, claiming he is dead, but you find that he's not. The gunman shoots Rick and tries to escape, but then is shot by the police. As Rick lays dying, Lou films him and tells him that he is fired because he cannot work with someone he does not trust. So he basically committed murder. He committed murder. And this is this is this is the lines of dialogue that they have, you know, last lines that Rick has with Lou. It's like you, you you sell it, you sell it. I can't jeopardize my business for success for an untrustworthy employee. You're crazy. You abused my bargaining power. You would have done it again. I I I don't I don't know. I know. I know. They just lets him die and films him dying. And then Nita, of course, is delighted by this footage and expresses her devotion to Lou. And then the news team discovers that the home invasion was actually a drug deal gone wrong. But Nita doesn't, doesn't admit information to maximize the story impact because fuck the truth. The truth isn't the biggest thing. The truth doesn't give us ratings. So the police then try to confiscate the footage of evidence, but Nita defends her right to withhold it. Then there's a good scene where uh, Lou is interrogated by a detective who she could see right through is bullshit, but there's nothing she can do about it. And so she interrogates him, but it doesn't matter that he fabricates a story about the men and, and the SUV following him, but the detective suspects he's lying because she could see through his bullshit, but she cannot prove it. So Lou gets let Lou gets away with murder, obstructing justice, and everything just so the news studio can get their lead story. And then Lou invests in two vans and hires a team of interns to expand his business. And that's how the film ends. And I'm actually, I like that the film ended that way. I like that it had that ending where it was like, okay, we're not going to end the typical way. We're going to end the film with this scumbag sociopath getting what he wants. It's not the, it's not the fairy tale ending. And I'm actually glad it ended that way. Because it, that's another thing that makes it unique. And, yeah. No, it's, it's not a crowd pleaser. That's not what the film is trying to do. That's not, for the, that's not what the film intended to be. But, it's still an excellent movie. It's a great look through the lens at a sociopath. Who also uses his own lens to fuel his sociopathic tendencies 
and his sociopathic desires. And the film, I I I, I know it's spoiler filled. I do the, I all my reviews are like this usually, um, but I recommend if you haven't seen Nightcrawler to give it a look. It has a standout performance of Jake Gyllenhaal, excellent direction and writing by um, writer director Dan Gilroy, and it's just a really well shot, well edited. You know, tense definitely has some really tense moments in the film that I thought really worked, and a very unconventional protagonist, and a very a kind of an unconventional film with with, uh, with the way with the plot line and and so forth, and it's pretty much just a story about the socio a sociopath living the American dream, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a, I think it's a. I think it's a really, really good movie. But anyway, I really don't want to say about Nightcrawler because it was rated out of five stars. I, I'm I'm gonna give it five. I didn't find anything wrong with it personally. So um it's definitely one of those films I was looking forward to. And it was actually a film that wasn't a disappointment. So that's always nice when that happens. Or there's a movie that I was looking forward to and was interested in and I see it and it lives up to my expectations. And actually exceeded them because I was just expected to be okay or, or above average, and I, it just, that was a great movie. It's definitely a film that I would like to pick up on Blu-ray or DVD in the future. Love to add this to my collection. But anyway, I really don't want to say about Nightcrawler except thank you for watching my review, and I will see you guys later. See ya.